Good morning, YouTube. Look at that view, huh? I love my commute. Today we're on the KLX 400, aka DRZ 400. And we're commuting to work once again. Hopefully not, uh, not going to be required in a few years. Maybe we we'll, can work out some sort of retirement, eh? Anyway, let's, uh, let's go. Good morning everyone. Welcome to another episode of Commuting with Mike. Just kidding. Another gorgeous morning in Southern California. It's finally starting to cool off a little bit. I think we're at 67 degrees this morning. We had uh, We had 107 degrees on like October 3rd, 4th. Kind of crazy. That's not normal. But it seems to be back to normal right now. Today we're on the KLX 400 slash DRZ 400. It needed a, a test drive since uh, I disassembled the triple clamp, cleaned off the old grease, put in new grease retorque that and adjusted the uh, spanner nut to my liking and I also replaced the brake pads with EBC HH pads and I replaced all the brake fluid the brakes are definitely biting better last time I rode it I grabbed a handful of brake and went hey I think a wooden stick might be better so, I changed some things around. They're a little more confidence inspiring now. <laughs> One thing I haven't put on this bike is uh, heated grips. I'm gonna ride it this winter, I, I might have to. I know that sounds kind of funny, heated grips in Southern California, but it gets below freezing almost every morning after next month in those mountains. So it gets a little chilly in there. Got the quad lock mount with the vibration dampener and the iPhone playing my tunes. Although on this bike, I can't really hear them. It's kind of a waste of time. be better to have the the maps going oh yeah we have traffic the brakes are definitely way better I probably didn't need to do a 120 mile test ride to, to figure that out eh Trump Vance I'll dig out the Himalayan tomorrow and we'll have a, uh, a three-part series back-to-back -back versus 300 versus DRZ versus Himalayan. Personally, of the three, I like this bike the best. It does everything I need it to do. Obviously, way more capable off-road. And it's adequate on-road. I don't understand the complaints about the bike on the highway it's just not that bad I mean it would be bad if you had to go 80 miles an hour yeah don't get me wrong but 55 60 65 this bike's fine 
which is the speed you'd be riding the other two bikes, the Versus Sandor, the Himalayan, right? On the highway. staging area back there on the left for cleanup from the airport fire. Uh, the seat concept seat on this bike makes a huge difference. The stock seat is like sitting on a um, 4x4. Literally, it's 4 inches wide and by 4 inches thick. And it's straight from front to back, which, you know, that's perfect for off-road. And off-road, you're not sitting as much anyway. Probably the only negative aspect of the, the DRZ 4, KLX 400 is... Um, it's a tall one. I don't let that bother me. I kind of grew up riding dirt bikes, so not a big deal. But if you're, you know, 4'10 or shorter, you have to plan your stops, that's for sure. Which isn't really a big deal. Chug-a-dug, thumping up the hill. Look at that view. many on this side though kind of rare to see them over here the, the fire probably hasn't confused yeah she's brisk up here in the hills today funny the different smells and environments you encounter on this commute because changes in elevations, geographic changes. That's all part of riding a motorcycle, eh? I think it's pretty safe to say a typical motorcyclist enjoys the outdoors. Those seem to go hand in hand. Probably one of the reasons I get a kick out of motorcycle camping actually. I don't know if any of you guys watch uh, follow Itchy Boots. She uh, she 
crashed last year, broke her collarbone, and the surgeons punctured her lungs trying to fix that. And she was down for quite a while. Still recovering, actually. But she decided on a new bike, and she went with an old bike because for the types of riding she does, having all that technology is just not a good idea. You know, kind of hard to find someone in the middle of the jungle in Africa or desert to fix your, your cruise control or your navigation or, or your fuel injection or whatever. Yeah, I understand that. I do find her choice of bikes interesting though. She went with an old 1980s Tenere 600. It's either 600 or 650. I think it's a 600. Um, and yeah, that's uh, that's not even low tech. That's no tech, right? Which is good. I don't mind that at all. I love car readers and, and those things. But it's kind of a tall bike for her, and it has a six and a half gallon gas tank. I think it'll be a little top heavy as she tips over. But, you know, it's her choice. She knows what she's doing. She's definitely ridden in remote areas a lot more than I have. Honestly, with the aftermarket support and uh, a bike like this one being around for 20-something plus years and still being made, I think I would have went with an old DRZ or an old DR650. They're pretty low tech. I mean, this is 1990s tech here. No fuel injection, no custom screens. Everything's analog. The kind of motorcycle that can be fixed anywhere, just about by any mechanic. And the aftermarket support for either the DRZ400 or the DR650 is might be the biggest in the world. I mean, it's it's pretty crazy what you can do to a DRZ or the 650 in regards to accessories and aftermarket parts. There's a whole bunch of people figuring out that new bikes just have too much crap on them. So you get places like Rocky Mountain supplying all kinds of goodies. You know, you can buy an old DRZ with a reasonable, lot of mi a reasonable amount of miles on it for three, four thousand dollars, right? And spend another maybe two thousand and get it uh, cross-country BDR ready. And you get yourself basically a, a new bike like this one for less than six thousand dollars. It's better than what you can buy from the manufacturer. I mean, I've got this Acerbis five gallon tank or Acerbi, however you choose to pronounce. Uh, you know, just all the aftermarket parts on the DRZ make, do make it that much better and bring it up to speed. No cruise control. Uh, I mean, I guess you could put cruise control on it if you wanted, but I'm not seeing that as a requirement on this bike. I don't plan on long distance highway treks uh, I have drive mode dashboard which I can put right here and I have this covers everything else up it gives me everything I need to know as far as navigation and weather and all the stuff more information than what a stock modern bike will give you and you can stream music from it or heck if you want you can watch Netflix when you're ripping through the woods I don't know whatever floats your boat I think I got these steering head bearings about right she feels good not showing any traffic yet that's good because when we left the house this was all red red and orange but anyway as I was saying yeah there's a whole bunch of people out there figuring out that you know what just pick up a used bike they use dual sport and set it up for as a lightweight adventure bike I mean, if I was to uh, head out cross country on this guy and I just chose two lane roads like this one, which is what I normally do anyway, because I hate the highway. A bike like this or CRF 300 or KLX 300, 
they're all perfectly adequate for that as long as you don't have too much gear and you're riding solo can't imagine doing it two up that'd be weird that's what my gs is for basically my wife loves riding on the back and going motocross or motocross motor motorbike camping as well so well, i'm glad there's not a whole bunch of traffic i'm sure we're going to find some i'm not a huge fan of lane sharing on this road that's how most of these crosses on the sides of the road end up being there right Not a fan of being rear-ended either though. Hey look, car parts. Need a lower A-arm and a drive uh, axle, spindle, disc. Might fit your car, who knows? Had to be one hell of a crash and knock your freaking lower A-arm off along with your drivetrain. Like I said, I've seen dumb things happen that could have been prevented. A little chili right here. Chili wonkers. Where's my heated grips? Oh no, we have fog. That's why. How do we have fog? This bike has a lithium battery. I don't know if anyone else has noticed, but like when I first started, it was like at 12.1, and it's just slowly climbed back up to. 13.6, 13.7. Lithium batteries charge differently, that's for sure. It's about half the size of the battery, the lead acid that was in there. We'll see how that goes. It's from Rocky Mountain. ATV and motorcycle. Almost every modification on this bike is from Rocky Mountain. The fog was brutal. Had to pull over and, uh, Clean off my visor. Couldn't see anything. Look at that fog. Was, I came from over there. About to hit the highway section of the commute. It's the DRZ's arch enemy, the highway. At least I can see now. Looks like we're recording. Hopefully, don't fog back up again. Hey, there's 68 miles an hour. That's not too bad. I gotta say, uh, even though the Versus 300 seems to handle the speed, the upper speeds better, this has more power up top. Like acceleration from 69 up to 80. I'm pretty sure this would pull away from the Versus 300. Definitely would pull away from the Himalayan 411. I think with the modifications that are done on this bike, it's pushing pretty close to 40 horsepower, so. And it does feel like about 40 horsepower with more torque, because the Versus 300 is 40 horse, but it's missing the torque, the high RPM engine. The butt dyno says this is close to 40, maybe just under. But nice, punchy torque, though, I like it. I've never ridden a stock DRZ, so I don't know what to compare it to. I uh, trailered this guy home when I bought it from the previous owner. Ripped it apart. Put it back together again. I never even rode it in the condition it was in, which wasn't bad. I just, I was pretty anxious to tear it apart and get it cleaned up and put all my new parts on it. And before I forget, and before I run out of battery, if you stuck with me this long, thank you. Thanks for watching. If you can, please subscribe, thumbs up. It actually helps get the video propagated out to other viewers. And subscriptions are always good. If you like the video, thumbs up, subscribe.
subscribe. Thanks. And uh, you guys ride safe and maybe I'll see you out here.